Jazzcast Pros. Hi, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Beauty Boss Millionaire. We are here with Boss Talks. We have a lovely thought leader on the line, Samantha Riley, all the way from Australia with this lovely accent. Hi there. How are you? I'm doing so well today. Thanks. How are you going? Doing well. I'm doing well. We also have Jazzy T on the line. She is our producer at Beauty Boss Millionaire. Hey, Jazzy. Becoming a thought leader could be a new business venture for somebody who's listening right now. Mm, And this is a business model that I honestly believe that every business owner should implement into their tool bag. Because no matter what you do, having this as as something, whether you, uh, like me, have it as your major business model or whether you use it as something on the side, I think it's a really, really smart move because everyone has got knowledge and expertise that is, you know, specific to them. So I've got a specific, um, the Freedom Business Formula, which is a six-step formula for how to design, create, and sell your online course. So if you want me to share, I can, I'm quite happy to share today exactly yes. what that system looks like so that people, Show us what it so that people like. can do it. Welcome back to the Beauty Boss Millionaire podcast with daily on-the-go episodes packed with testimonies and business tips to help you create financial freedom through entrepreneurship. Hosted by the owner of Fricassi Lashes and the Blow Dry Lounge, the Beauty Boss Millionaire herself, Felicia Fricassi. Hello. Hello. Well, hello, Samantha Riley. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Everyone is joining in. Come on in, Jazzy, you just joined. Hi, Rocky Dog. Oh, my God, all these lovely people are joining in. Thank you so much. All right. Hello, hello. Hi, Samantha. It's Jazz. Hi, Jazz. How are you? I'm doing amazing today. Well, good morning. I, I, I hear you got a head start on Thursday. Yeah. In the future, can I just say, the future is fabulous. So there, <laughs> there's your top tip for today. <laughs> oh, I love it. The future is fabulous. I love your title for your podcast, Thought Leaders Business Lab. Love it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm in Australia, obviously, hence the different accent. I've been in business for almost 30 years now, started off in the dance industry. I had a dance studio. We had some retail stores in in dancewear, moved into health and fitness, and in 2010 decided there was a few life changes that happened. I decided I wanted to overhaul my life. I didn't want to be turning up at a local bid business anymore. I wanted a business where I had the freedom to work when and where I wanted. And that was sort of right at the beginning of, you know, not the beginning of online, but as things were sort of starting to take off, you know, Facebook had started and social media people were getting on. And um, so I decided to explore the online world and took my coaching online, Mm -hmm. which is what I've been doing now for almost 10 years. And now I work with coaches, course creators and experts to help them be the thought leader that people turn to and live their life by design. I love that. Because some people are saying, hmm, I've never heard that term before, a thought leader. What do you say a thought leader is? What does that mean to you? To me, a thought leader is someone that is able to share their thoughts in their own unique way. Now, obviously, mo- you know, none of us are born with knowledge. You know, we learn it along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the way that we put our thoughts together, our knowledge along with our experiences and really um, put it together in a way that's unique to us with the way that we see things in the world, um, with our own branding or different methodologies together so that we're able to share it in a way that no one else does. Now, there's a lot of people out there that say that you can't just call yourself a thought leader, that you know, other people bestow that title on you. But I'm a big believer that if we don't think like a thought leader to start with, then we're never going to get there. That it's a really great way to, or it's a really great filter to help us push ourselves to help really take our work and our thoughts um, and our leadership to the next level. Love it. That is awesome what you're doing. And I love that, you know, you're showing people how to be successful in business and how to just grow their business and how to market their businesses. And these are all key things that are needed for someone that is brand new in the business that wants to expand and just really start to grow their business. What advice would you have for them? Mm. So 
I, my biggest advice, and I do this with every single one of my clients is say, just put the business aside for a minute. Let's not start there, which sounds super counterintuitive when you, when you're thinking about business. But where I like to start is what I call life by design. What do you want your life to look like? Now, the reason I start here is when I, when I went into my first business back in 1992, I was at home and I had two small children, both preschool children, and I was working corporate. Uh, so I was working all through the day and my husband back then was working night shift. So we never saw each other. We never saw our kids. And what I decided was that I wanted to leave my corporate position and go into business so that I could spend more time with my children. But what I did was ask myself the question, well, what business could I start? And because I'd been in dance for so long, I went and started a dance studio. And for anyone that that knows what it's like teaching children, you, you generally, or that type of business model, you can't work in the day when kids are at school. You're working when the children finish school. Obviously, not when we're in a pandemic, obviously. Um, but, you know, I was working after hours. So not only was I working in the day, but I was working after hours as well. So I was actually seeing my children less. Now, if I had have asked myself a different question at that time, and that question was, what would you like your life to look like? Then I would have come up with a very different answer to, um, to that question, and I would have ended up somewhere different. So the first question I think people should ask themselves is, what do I want my life to look like? You know, what kind of hours do I want to be working? Where do I want to be spending most of my time? Where do I, what sort of environment do I want to be working with? Who are the people that I want to surround myself with? Where do I want to be living? Because all of these questions help you form a vision, not just a vision of what you want your life to look like, but it also helps you understand how much income you need to be able to support that lifestyle, which mm -hmm. means that then not just you're choosing something that you really want to do, but you're ensuring that you get the income that you need so you can like reverse engineer that business model because there's nothing worse than having grand dreams and then choosing a business that, uh, that doesn't support those dreams. So get really, really clear on what you want your life to look like first and then once you've got the answers to that, then you're able to go on and, and go, okay, well, what, what sort of business could fit into this lifestyle, could support this lifestyle that I'm wanting to live? Beautiful. I agree with that. It's so important that you do kind of have the vision first of what you want so you can build around that versus doing the back, you know, doing it backwards, definitely. To you, what do you feel like leaders right now and business owners really, I mean, you're going through the pandemic. I heard, aren't you, mm -hmm. aren't you on lockdown right now? We're in lockdown. We're in week seven of the lockdown so far. We're going to be in lockdown for a couple of months yet, I would say. Can you share how this is affecting your business and how, well, it might not really be, maybe other people's business, yours and others. Mm. How is this? We, we're not locked down where we're at in the United States right now. We are thinking that maybe there will be one coming, but another one coming. But we, as of right now, we're here, you know, we're wearing our masks um, pretty much, you know, in the stores and at home, we're not wearing them. And some of the schools are enforcing that you have to wear them. And in Florida, mm -hmm. they're saying no masks in the schools. I can't even imagine a second lockdown, what that would do. So how are you guys doing and how are businesses doing? Look, I, my heart is going out to any local business at the moment. The, you know, the, the salons, the, the gyms, the restaurants, you know, whilst restaurants can do takeaway, they, they're still not able to, to, you know, do a full dinner service. So they're, they're losing a lot of money. So a lot of these local businesses are starting off every week thousands of dollars in debt before they even start the week. They are unable to open their business. It's extremely, extremely stressful for them um, because not only are they accruing business debt, but how do they put money on the, uh, how do they put dinner on the table? So the, the energy here is not fabulous right now because of that. There's a lot of stress, a lot of mental health issues for local business owners. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, my heart really goes out. Right. So uh, are they providing any type of, uh, I mean, this, are they providing some type of compensation or is there any type of stimulus now that it, this is the second round of it? Mm, so a little bit. Um, I'm not real up on, on how much they're getting, but I know the amount is so pitiful that it doesn't even come close to what the costs are that they're accruing. And I believe that they haven't even been given some of the stimulus money from when we had a lockdown 
um, at the end of last year, in December last year. I could be wrong on that, but that's the the whispers that I've heard. So um, it's not great. It's not great. And that's why I'm totally all about online business because obviously that's where the world, most of the world is right now. Right. That brings me to my next point, which is really good that you mentioned the online thing. If this didn't teach you from the last shutdown, not you per se, but the audience <laughs> that's listening, if this didn't, didn't teach us to make sure our online business is up and running so we have a visual, we have a, a, a Shopify, a cart space, anything so that people can shop on your business, now is the time to start building just in case us here and any other country that you're listening from goes through this, what she's going through right now, Samantha. I mean, I can't imagine... I heard that y'all only one person can go out the house or something. Is that true? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. Only one person can leave the house at a time. Um, and uh, because I don't do the shopping in my house, I haven't been, I haven't been able to go anywhere for seven weeks. <laughs> All right, we have to take a quick break and we'll be right back. For exclusive content on how to make millions in your business, go to beautybossmillionaire.com and click on Become a Patron to gain access to patron-only episodes, Beauty Boss Millionaire t-shirts, and a private Facebook group with live streams with me, Felicia Fricasi. Oh, I know you're probably loving this. I don't like to shop either, by the way, Samantha. <laughs> my, my husband is the person that shops in my house. Uh -huh. and he has a whole grocery list. And I mean, I just can't imagine what you guys are going through. I mean, you're blessed because you're you're online. I mean, I'm sure people mm -hmm. are still coming to you and you can do Zoom. Are you guys using Zoom as well or? Totally, totally, yeah. So yeah, you're right. So for, from our perspective, I, I definitely am not saying I'm going through a tough time because it hasn't really affected our business um, from, the, from a monetary sense. It certainly has from a um, making sure that we support our clients. It's a little bit more um, tiring than normal but I'm totally there to look after all my clients. It's, it's the local businesses that I really, really, really feel for. I, I mean, in case we do go in lockdown, this <laughs> is just a word to the wise. Make sure you guys have the online presence, anyone that's listening in, our live audience, because we don't really know what's going to happen next. And this is a concern. A lot of people keep on asking me. We keep on getting emails on the podcast. A lot of people want to know what's going to happen next because we just went through the first phase and, you know, we, don't, we just don't know. You know, we've mm -hmm. already had people protesting here saying that there's no way in the world they even want to get the vaccine, let alone uh, go on a lockdown. So mm. we are just hoping that you all bounce back because it, this is impacting so many people's econ the economy all over globally. So, oh, ooh, and, so and it's going to be for such a long time. Just, just Samantha. Had, yeah, I just I had a question, too, because we don't get we don't hear a lot about what's going on in Australia. Some things on some French social networks. And I'm not sure about how much of it is true. And since we have you on the line from Sydney specifically, um, can you just kind of explain to us here in the United States, like what it's like? And as far as um, like the, in your house, like how how is it maintained that only one person goes out? What happens if you are caught, you know, in a group of people? Like what's actually happening over there? Mm, so so what's interesting is I don't think that um, Sydney is uh, as strict for the lockdown as one of our other states, Melbourne, that has had, I believe Melbourne last year had the largest lock or the longest lockdown in the world. They had a lockdown for a hundred and... 11 days I think um, and they were they had a very strict lockdown it doesn't seem to be as strict here um, but it is only one person out of the house at a time they're not really policing that unless you're in one of the the hot zones or one of the the zones where the delta virus is really rife and when I say that can I just say that our numbers here are so low compared to anywhere else in the world, you know, we're, we're, we're only getting, and when I say only, for, this is a lot for Australia, but for the rest of the world, we're only getting around two to 300 cases a day. So they have really locked down hard for, you know, something that, that's not even close to what, what um, you're experiencing in the US and, and anywhere in Europe. Um, but if you're, in a, if you're in a hot zone, um, you will get fined. The police are are policing and if people are seen to be you know out together or or you can't stop in a park and have a cup of coffee you have to keep moving then you will get a fine from the police 
Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's so unbelievable. Like here in New York, there was um, a mandate as far as like don't gather in, you know, large groups and things like that. But I was always able to go to a park and, and you know, pretty much do whatever I wanted in the most part, you know, um, and that was only for a couple of months. So that's why we're kind of asking this questions because we, we want to bring knowledge to what's going on there. And then also we're going to transition back to because people can't do things they used to do and, and gather and, and walk about freely, how becoming a thought leader could be a new business venture for somebody who's listening right now. Mm, and this is a business model that I honestly believe that every business owner should implement into their tool bag because no matter what you do, having this as, as something, whether you, uh, like me, have it as your major business model or whether you use it as something on the side, I think it's a really, really smart move because everyone has got knowledge and expertise that is, you know, specific to them. So maybe... Um, you know, there's a salon owner that specializes in lash extension, extensions, for example, and their expertise or their knowledge experience is that they've opened up, you know, five salons and they know how to scale those salons. Then pulling together some sort of online course or membership that teaches um, owner, salon owners that do lash extensions how to scale and grow their business, like that, that's valuable information that other people are looking for. Absolutely. I was on a call. I was on a call just um, recently with someone in the United States who owned um, pizza shops, and actually, this was last year when she couldn't actually open her pizza shops. But what she realised is that, or what we talked about, was the fact that she what she did was purchase these pizza shops that were not making very much money, and she scaled them to seven figures within six months. And I said to her, are there other pizza shop owners that would love to scale to seven figures in six months? She went, yeah, it's like it's everyone would want to know this because, you know, I've got this specific methodology. And she put together a course that teaches that and it was and it was very uh, popular straight away. Mm -hmm. You know, so start to think about what is your knowledge, what is your specific experience so that then you can teach other people how That's to do right. what it is that you know. That's right. And that's really important because people right now, they want to be able to work for themselves because you can't count on the government. You can't count uh -uh. on, you can't, can, and anyone but your own two hands is what I've always said. And I've always put myself in a position really just to depend on what I could do, not a job per se. And, you know, you're right. Let's face it. If you can go online and create a course or some type of online learning course, like we did during, we actually did that, what you said during the pandemic for Kasi Lashes um, and the, we kind of just started training a lot of people. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, so, and people, like I said, nowadays you can go on Zoom, put a course together, you know, make sure it's detailed because you're going to have to be a little bit more creative with it because it's less um, hands-on and more, you know, more online and vi it's more visual learning. So mm -hmm. It's just something that's needed right now. You know, I don't know how long you guys are going to be on lockdown. It's a concern that we have. A lot of people are already bracing themselves here for it because we don't know if we're going to have to go on lockdown again. Mm. So, um, totally. Just, and so the people that are selling coffee, just I noticed you mentioned that if they're, you can't sit down and have coffee in the park. Mm -hmm. I mean, are some businesses open that like restaurants, like we were considered essential here, which means that we were able to, you know, if you had a restaurant or some type of food based business that's considered essential because people need food, are, mm -hmm. are they mm -hmm. able to open or? Yeah, any food store is able to open as long as they provide only takeaway. So no, no seated restaurants, but they can offer takeaway. So we can still go out and get our coffee. It's just that we're not allowed to stop with it. We have to keep moving. Oh my goodness. Jazzy, what do you think about that? I just can't even believe it. I just, I mean, you're talking about you can't sit on the chair outside of the coffee shop and, and mm -hmm. enjoy it. You have to carry it all the way home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, uh, how about like, uh, like, like um, public transit? Is, is that up and running at all? How does yep. that go? Yeah, that totally is up and running because our essential workers still need to be able to get to work. So, we, so um, our public transport is still working, um, you know, and we still can leave the house. I still, you know, you can still go for outside for exercise. I live at the beach, so, you know, I go to the beach every day she, still. Yeah, so so we're, not, we're not totally, totally like you can't leave your house. Like, but but, but you, 
<laughs> but it, there's not a lot that you can do. We're, so we're all exercising and getting ready for our beach bodies. <laughs> so you're, yeah, so you're luxury living it though. You have the privilege of being by the beach, honey. I right, mean, right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> it's not a bad place to be, you know, hanging out for the lockdown. So are people now getting the vaccine more and more? We're all conflicted here in the United States. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm all for the vaccine because I just want the world to go back to normal. I want to be able to get on a plane again and go see my friends in the US. I've got, I used to go to the US, you know, two to four times a year. Right. Um, so I'm missing my friends. I want to be able to go see them. I want to get on a plane and see my family. Right. So um, I'm re- I'm ready to take one for the for the world. So you're going to take um, one for the team. <laughs> I'm going to take one for the team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jab me, and give me the t-shirt. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's a tough time. All right, so back to your what you're doing with the Thought Leaders, the, the Business Lab. Mm-hmm. Your co-host is Tim. And so mm-hmm. Tim and you guys, you guys just basically work and help other people just coach. You're basically coaching, you're consulting, you're doing all these type of, you're just creating a lot of entrepreneurs, it sounds like. Absolutely. So Tim's, um, he's, he's got a separate business. He specializes in helping people set up their, their CRMs and their email um, mm-hmm. Yep. marketing campaigns yep. mm-hmm. uh, my business I coach people with the strategy around how to do that so I've got a specific um, the freedom business formula which is a six-step formula for how to design create and sell your online course and I take people through that uh, and generally actually right at the beginning of the pandemic last year we had clients that were making money within two weeks so if you want me to share, I can, I'm can. i quite happy to share today exactly yes. what that system looks like so that people, Show us what it so looks that people like. can do it. Yes, sure. What does it okay. look like? Mm-hmm. All right. So the Freedom Business Formula is, I'll just quickly run through it first. It's design it, create it, sell it, build it, deliver it, and scale it. Now, this formula actually is a little bit um, the opposite way to a lot of people teach it. I was just chatting to someone the other day who was um, had spent – a lot of money for a a high-end course on how to um, start her online course Mm -hmm. and she was learning how to, you know, put sets together and how to, you know, decide what to wear and I'm like, don't worry about any of that. Let's start off with number one, get really clear, design it, get clear on what you want your life to look like. That should take you a good couple of hours. Sit down with, you know, your journal or, um, you know, a piece of paper, your iPad and glass of wine, cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever, and just get it all out of your head and really dream big. Once you've got that out, then we move on to create it. And create it is around getting the expertise out of your head. Mm-hmm. So what is it that your that your knowledge is? What is it that your experience, so your specific experience? And what I mean there is what makes you different to anyone else that does what you do? get to really like dive deep onto what makes you different um get clear on your your specific expertise um uh, and your passions and from there you generally come up with an idea pretty quickly of okay this is what i could do this is what i could teach girl where have you been i haven't seen you at work in a while girl i quit and started my own business really that's amazing how did you do it well i've been listening to this beauty boss millionaire podcast and it really helped me change my mindset from an employee to a ceo all that from a podcast yes the beauty boss millionaire walks you through the process of starting a business and making your first million i need that in my life i need someone to help me just go to beautybossmillionaire.com or pull it up on your favorite podcast app it's time to boss up if you have just sold your very first course then what you'll be doing is you'll be building your course as you're delivering it because you Uh haven't built it before you sold it Mm -hmm. so you will build a module then you will deliver it to the client then the next week you'll build module two you'll deliver it and so on so you don't build it in advance you're building it as you go through And then step six is scale it. And you only move into scale it once you've successfully um, created and sold and built your course. And generally, I I suggest that around the $10,000 a month um, regular recurring revenue is a 
is a a good guide for the, mm-hmm. at that point. That's when you want to scale. Um, mm-hmm. But so many people move into scale before they've even started. Like they do it backwards. You know, getting all of the things up and running, spending a lot of money on on branding and getting team members on board and getting fancy membership portals and and you know getting fancy video sets where none of that matters. Just mm-hmm. sell your course first, get proof of concept, go through that system and then scale it. So we um, went through this, as I mentioned earlier, with clients last year. They sold, they had paying clients within the first two weeks of going through this process. Uh, one of our clients made uh, $20,000 within the first month and that was in May last year. Up until now, his cre- he's almost at seven figures a year by just repeating this process of create mm-hmm. it, sell it, build it, deliver it. Beautiful. So there you go. There's the key to make the money. There's a the key to the millions, y'all. We'll continue this conversation over on Samantha's podcast, The Thought Leaders Lab. Thanks for tuning in to Beauty Boss Millionaire. This episode has been sponsored by... Do you have unwanted facial hair or underarm hair? Don't wax, don't tweeze. Stop in for Kasi Lashes and ask for laser hair removal. Six sessions for only $200 for the lip or chin. Bikini and underarm only $300. For Kasi Lashes in the Grace Mall, 225 Lash. All technicians are laser certified and overseen by Dr. Gary's.